you mentioned you have about 12, 15 properties in Indianapolis, right? And then you have them in a trust and then the LOC is the beneficiary of the trust, right? Of all the, the trust. Do you cap number of LOCs or uh, properties based on the equity that you have? You're, you're laughing, so I'm sure you've been asked this question a few times. Uh, is it based on number of properties or do you cap it based on the equity? Or you don't do that because, you know, like you have a layer of trust with LLC protection. And then in your case, you know, you have the trustee is also a Wyoming LLC, then you don't even care about that. A great question. And I'm, I'm smiling because I was wondering, well, that's a softball. I, I love that question. It really exemplifies, you know, the thinking around asset protection. And I used to make this mistake that I would tell people, look at the equity, right? You know, so if you were buying properties, I would say have in this pro have put into this LLC no more than five properties up to about four hundred thousand dollars in equity. So maybe that's uh, four properties you drop into this one limited liability company. And, you know, I even in my first book, I I stated this is what you should do. And this is our approach. When I first started out and I was advising people, I was focusing on this here, the equity, because if something goes wrong with one of these properties, assume each of them have $100,000 equity in each of them, your total risk of loss because you put them in an LLC is gonna be 400K. They can't get more than what's inside of there. So you're down here and you're protected. But as I started investing, I realized that advice doesn't address the concerns of someone who's investing, you know, trying to build a portfolio of residential real estate because we don't buy for equity. That's a flip, right? In flippers, you're building the equity so you can turn around and sell it. If you're buying residential real estate, you're buying for what? You're buying for cash flow. That's what I buy for. You know, I do flip, but I buy for cash flow. You can't live on your equity. So you're living on that cash flow. And so if I had four properties and each property generates $5,000 a year after all expenses, this LLC is kicking off 20K a year in positive cash flow. What I have put at risk is that cash flow. And that cash flow is what has allowed me to possibly change my standard of living. Maybe my wife's no longer having to work now because we've got that 20K coming in. So a lot of the ch changes can happen in my life. And one screw up takes away all that cash flow. And so I tell people, I know how hard it is to build a portfolio. And, you know, until you get that momentum going and things really start to take off, it's a, it's a grind to find deals and especially deals that cash flow and, and the numbers work out. So I think when you're first starting out, I tell people one property per LLC. And some people will push back on me. I said, you know, you're, you're free to do it this way, but how difficult was it for you to get that first property, that second property, that third property? Do you really want to risk them? Because if something goes wrong in that LLC, they're all at risk. Now, there comes a point in time with your structuring where you can take on more risk. Now, as I stated, I have over 300 properties. I do not have 300 limited liability companies. But what I've done is I've compartmentalized my investments where I can put 10 properties per LLC. And the reason I feel comfortable doing that is because my properties generate really good cash flow and I can take a hit and lose 10 properties. You know, I had two properties burned down last year because of faulty wiring. Now, if that LLC was sued and I lost all 10 properties, it sucks because that maybe is forty, fifty thousand dollars $50,000 a year now that I've just lost from my rental portfolio, but I have 29 other LLCs that are kicking off 50 grand a year. So it doesn't change my standard of living. It doesn't impact me the same way it would when somebody's starting out and they only have five properties and they become to rely upon that income and they're counting on that income to do their next deal and it's wiped out. Well, that's gonna change significantly your lifestyle. So I think as you grow, you can afford to take on more risk. When you're green, you can't. And so that's why I've changed how we, or how we educate people on when you should create, you know, one LLC versus multiple LLCs for your investing. And would you have uh, each of the LLCs have their own bank accounts or you have like one common operating bank accounts for and then uh, for the different LLCs that you have? Depends, depends. You know, if, if you're using a PM, um, then typically it's going to be one bank account for, 
for the group. So, so if I had, uh, like, this. so take my, my, an indie, boom. They're all held like this. Um, I have one bank account here. I don't have any bank accounts up here, but I keep good books and records down here. Now, why do I do that? Well, because I have a PM who will only send out one owner statement. So for 12 properties, they're not gonna send me, you know, 12 separate owner statements and 12 separate wires. They're just gonna, they send one wire and one owner statement with all 12 properties listed out. So I've chosen then to move it right into this entity here. So that's where it comes into. And then my bookkeeper steps in and then starts, takes the owner statement and breaks everything out on my, my QuickBooks. Well, I actually ever do it on a spreadsheet for me because it's easier for me to read and she puts it in QuickBooks. But then I can go on and I can check out each each property on a monthly basis. I have other clients that self-manage and if they're not using an entity that they've credit set up to be their self-manager in, in collecting the rents from the tenants and then many times they'll have the rents paid directly to the LLC itself. And I also tell people, you know, when you open up a bank account for an LLC, if you're if if you're really bad at books, right? Keeping good books and records as far as from an accounting standpoint, you're better off just setting up a bank account for each LLC you set up and just collect all the rent in there because at least you have the bank statements to go off of when you're preparing your tax returns. You can look back and say, all right, how much money did this property bring in? What were the expenses associated with this property? Uh, because it's all running through that one account. So, so it's also a personality issue as well. Okay. Yeah, no, great advice.